Hey guys, Machine Dana here. I hope you're doing really, really well. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about custom stingers. Now, if you don't know what custom stingers are, the chances are it's just been applied as a theme to your Streamlab software and it just happens uh, and you're just happy with that. And perhaps you're a little bit new to streaming or whatever. If you do know what stingers are, I can show you here exactly how you can customize them and change them. Uh, and get the best from them on your stream. I have done a video more specifically about transitions and motion transitions, and I will link that in the video before. I highly recommend that if you're not using motion transitions on your stream within Streamlabs OBS that you check that out. It's a really good video. It does help make your stream look significantly more professional. I'll show an example of what that actually is, just for reference point. So an example of motion transitions are this. So I'm not going to be covering motion transitions and connections within Streamlabs OBS within this video, but you can check that out below. In this video, I'm specifically concerned with the stingers that you would use to transition between full scenes rather than changing an element or a source like a motion transition would do. So if you didn't know what a stinger was, a stinger is some sort of transitional piece of media that connects one scene to another scene. So for example, I've got a full cam screen that we're looking at right now. If I want to transition to having a scene where my cam's in a certain area, I would have a stinger that would transition from that. Stinger transitions can be used in all kinds of different ways. They can be used to add effects and interesting branding to your stream, but they can also just be used as a quick way of conveniently moving between scenes as well and in more of a functional capacity. It's completely personal preference on how you use stinger transitions. Some people have quite elaborate stinger transitions. I'm not personally a fan of those. Most of the overlays and themes that you would download now from Stream Elements or Nerd or Die or Streamlabs online do come with custom stingers that fit the theme of the overlays that you're downloading. And the great thing is, what you can generally do is actually locate the file of those stingers and take those stingers, store the files, and then use those same stingers on different transitions. And that's quite key because sometimes you might really enjoy a stinger transition from a themed pack, but you might not want to actually use the whole theme. And that recently happened to me. I quite liked a neon theme that I wanted to download from Streamlabs. But actually, the stinger, I just didn't like it. So I managed to locate a stinger elsewhere from a different theme pack. And that worked a lot better for my stream. I located the file and I added it to my stream. So in this video, I'm going to cover exactly how you locate them, how you can change them, and how you set them up on your stream. So here are some examples of stingers. So as you can see, that's just transition between one to another scene. I also have some custom stingers too that I use, for example... The ones that you see in this video, uh, which I also sometimes use on certain streams. Just like that. So you can add branded, you can add themed ones. It's actually quite easy to manage and change and interchange these. If you're anything like me and you like to keep your stream fresh, I update mine every couple of months with a load of new changes just to keep things moving and changing and fresh and keep the viewers guessing, then you'll probably want to be changing your stingers regularly. It really doesn't take long to do this. If you do find this video useful, feel free to give it a thumbs up. I'd certainly enjoy a subscription from you as well if you've got time to give it a little click. And of course, uh, feel free to check me out at twitch.tv forward slash machine day I stream most days and it'd be my pleasure to answer any questions that you've got about streaming. Okay, so to add the Stinger transition. So first of all, what we want to be doing, all of your Stinger transitions within Streamlabs OBS will be located on this cog, which is nested under your Scenes section. You can add and take away Scenes, but we're not concerned with doing that. We're simply concerned with editing the Scene transitions. Here's where you'll see different types of Stingers. You can name them and also give it a type. We're concerned today with Stinger transitions, and as I mentioned, here is also where you would manage the motion transitions and things like that that I showed earlier. So to add a new Stinger transition, you simply click Add Transition. You can name the transition. Global Stinger. And then we say we want it as a Stinger, and then you can choose a media file. Now, just briefly, I'm going to go and show you exactly what media files are supported within Streamlabs OBS, because that can be quite important if you're asking someone from Fiverr or whatever to design you some custom Stingers. So to look at what video media is supported for the Stingers, I'm just going to add a new source, and I'm going to add a media source here. And this shows us here, add videos or sound clips to your scene. These are all the file types that are supported. MP4, MOV, Waves, uh, WebMs are all good. Um, most people use WebM or MOV, 
but you can also use like mp4s or whatever as well you want to browse to the file itself in this case i've got some custom stingers here in a folder and just to have a look properties these are mov files dot mov files at high resolution but I've also got some WebM versions of the same things as well. We can add that by clicking open. The transition point, we can actually select a frame or a time in milliseconds. And this is quite important. And you might just need to trial and error this transition point by editing this Stinger transition. Somewhere normally within 500 to 1,500 milliseconds is generally going to be okay. Um, but it, it very much depends on the length of the video file. If your transition is three or four seconds long, you might want to look at a transition point of like 2000 milliseconds. Personally, I wouldn't recommend having a stinger that is more than a half a second to two seconds in duration. They may seem quite cool to start with, but after a while they get tedious and the viewers get a bit irritated by them if they're a really long transition period. They are meant to just be a very momentary change up of scene. It's kind of the equivalent of pulling back the curtains on a theatre stage for them to change the scene around and then pull back the curtain to reveal the new scene. So, of course, you don't want to be keeping the audience waiting while you're moving furniture around in your scenes. I just don't... You know what I'm saying, okay? So, set a transition point. I'm going to just test this on 1200 milliseconds. You've got audio monitoring on or off, so you can mute or you can allow the audio output of the Stinger transition. And then you've got a fade out style, so you can do a cross fade or a fade out to transition point and then fade in. Because we've set this as the Stinger and that's used selected as the default, it will always use that as the global Stinger transition. But we've just set up this global Stinger here. So I'm just going to select that one instead and see what that looks like. This is now the global one. You can specify a specific Stinger transition by connecting one scene to another in the connections tab here. I'm not going to be going into detail about that today because I've already done that and the link is in the description below as I mentioned at the start of the video. So I'm now selecting that as the Stinger. We'll click done on that. I'm going to disable performance mode so we can see what this looks like. I'm back again. So that Stinger transition seems to work in terms of the timestamp of the Stinger transition. It's important to note that at any point you can edit your Stinger transition and just change the video file and have a completely new Stinger in there. And sometimes it's not so obvious when you download a theme pack from one of the providers, what is the Stinger. So if you've downloaded and installed a theme, you can easily go to the COG, locate which Stinger is being used, edit it, and then you can specifically find the file by copying the directory path here. And then you can copy that and browse to it within your Windows Explorer. Now between any scene transitions, that Stinger will be used. There you go. Hopefully you found that useful. Let me know in the comments below how you get on with this. If you've got any questions or if you see any bugs or anything like that, I want to know first, so let me know. Don't forget to like and subscribe and take it easy. Have a wonderful day.